Many-to-many -many relationships is one of the kinds that you can choose within Power BI, but it does come with some issues if you're not entirely sure what you're doing. So in this video, I'm going to show you what those issues could be and also what some alternatives are if you're not going to do it. My name is David and I'm going to have tons of videos on Power BI, Excel, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So give this video a like if you enjoy this. Um, one of the main issues with Power BI as opposed to something like Excel is that you don't see things in line. So you've got three views, the actual table view, the model view, and then the, the visuals. But what I'm doing is I've got pictures of each one so we can see them in line as we're doing the other things during this exercise. All right, so let's get started. Now, a many-to-many -many relationship, if I go to my model view, is something like this. So if I double click it, then if I have duplicates of it, as you can see here, I have duplicates of all of them. I can't see them in the list of three, but I can guarantee you there are duplicates. And I've made these tables. And if I try to change this, it will tell me that I can't, it's not valid. So I get this symbol that appears, and this is a many to many relationship. This means that it goes in both directions, which usually happens for many to many. You have star here and star here. So over here, what's going to happen? If I, let's say that I'm going to do something with one field. So I've actually got two column fields in the data. I've got the fruit column and I've got the date column. And there are duplicates in both of them, which is why it forces me to do many to many. So if I go to the M to M ones first, and then we'll do the other ones later on. So I'm going to look at the fruit from this one and put that in a table. Then I'm going to look at the actuals from this one. Then I'm going to look at the budget from this one. So this is going to give me this data, which seems like it's working because there's just no apple in both of them. But if we look closer, we can see that 155 and 85 are there, but that actually doesn't add up to 322. Now what's actually happening is in the budget table, I have mango, which is 82, but mango does not appear in the yellow table above. So if you have this kind of situation, then it won't show you and it also won't tell you that there's an issue. Now, if you have your data set up and you're aware of this, then that shouldn't come up, but it is something that could happen. Now, if we did have mango in the yellow table, then this issue wouldn't happen and actually we'd get the sum adding up. Let me show you an example of that. So now I've added in mango in my source table, as you can see that these are corresponding as I might expect. So that's good if you have the right amount, but in the case where you have one value in one table only, then it won't work necessarily. All right, so let's look at two common dimensions. So here we have one common dimension, which is a fruit, but we've also got the date dimension, which is in common. So we're going to add that as well. And in this case, I'm going to choose uh, from actuals again, I'm gonna choose date and I'm going to choose fruit. And then I'm going to choose actuals and I'm gonna choose budget next to it. And now I have them here next to each other. And I can see that I get these repeated columns. Whenever you see repeated numbers, that usually means that there's an error happening. So if I look over here, I can see that Apple, it's correct that it's not there. And Mango, which is just the only one, it is correct that it is showing me in both. And note that these, this one doesn't correspond anymore because now there's Mango in here. But let's look at the other ones, 85, 85, 85, 85. That's supposed to be what's going on in budget for oranges. And if I look at orange, I have 13 and 72, which added together equal 85, but it's definitely not right to have on the 31st of August to have 85. So this value is not right at all. Whereas this one, it's the same idea. So 155 and 155 for lemon, I have lemon, lemon, lemon. So three of them together, add these three numbers together and you will get 155, but it's definitely not right this one as is. All right, so, uh, and now let me remove the mango and you'll see what happens again. So I remove the mango and mango has disappeared from this. So it's not, in, it's not a row in the data anymore. And this through two, two number is definitely, definitely far off. Now, if I, if I did the other way around, I did M to M budget M to M budget, and then actual budget, we would see the opposite thing. Let's, let's give that a try. Let me untick this and tick these two, uh, but let me just rearrange it into a more logical 
formation. There we go. And now we can see that my duplicates are happening in this one. I have way fewer rows than I had before because I have just the number of rows of here. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's, uh, it's not really working. Now I might have a different number of rows if there were duplicates across the both columns, the both fields. So back to this one where I've now changed this to be the date and I've also added a slicer because remember that a slicer can also be another dimension. So now it's showing me 411 in each of these two cases, but actually that's not really the number because it is just a repeated number again. So you can just have another dimension by adding a slicer, even if it's not in the visual itself. And this is happening because of something called ambiguity in the relationship. It's ambiguous whether it relates first the date to the date or first the fruit to the fruit, etc., etc. And it's, it's causing a whole load of issues. So let's look at some alternatives to doing this same process without using a real M10 relationship. All right, so this is what could go wrong. Some of the things that could go wrong. Now let's look at another alternative. And this is an alternative I don't often see people talk about, but I actually use this in certain situations. Not much as I use the bridge table, which is a lot easier, but I do use this in certain situations. And this is where you have just one table. I call this a stack table. So what I've done is I've taken all the rows from the yellow table, all the rows from the orange table, and stacked them on top of each other. And notice that there is no country for the budget columns. And I've just gotten, well, date and fruit are the same, and then country is just in one. Then I've got value, and then I've got caption as well over here. So I've just said which one comes from the actuals, which one comes from the budget table. I'll show you how to make this in a little bit, but let's see how it works. So in this one, if I just choose from the one table, I'm going to choose the date, uh, or well, I'm going to choose the fruit, and then I'm going to choose the actuals and budgets, and then I'm going to move out here. Remember that mango appears in one table, but not the other one. Apple appears in this table, but not that one. And this is showing me perfectly correctly. The totals add up and the numbers are perfectly fine. Um, and if I want to just copy this and paste it here, then I'm going to include the second dimension as well, which is going to be date from the stack table. And if I put that in the right order like this, and I can click to sort whichever I want to sort. And the ones that do compare, then I can compare them. So this way will actually work. But doing this, it, it's not used that often because sometimes it's not very desirable to change your data into something like this, and it can be pretty inconvenient. But I will show you how to do it because this is something that I use quite a lot. Um, next up, we're going to look at bridge tables. A table that has one column that says fruit name, and then there is a one-to-many relationship from that one to bridge budget, and one-to-many from that one to bridge actuals. Here is the table, that's it. It's just one column with these three fruits, and then you have another bridge for dates. So let's look at my dim fruits table, which just has one column for fruit name, and then I'm going to add the bridged actuals and then the bridged budgets like this, and I can see that this is working quite well. So it is able to give me the numbers. Notice that it does have the blank value, but as opposed to the many to many, the totals actually do add up. And then we're going to look at two common dimensions, the fruit name and then the dates. You should always have a date dimension table anyway. That should kind of go without saying. Uh, I have another video where I talk a lot about those, but I'm going to look at the actuals and budget here, and I can see that they are showing up correctly. Note that this is happening because of Mango, but if I compare this to the other one, 751322, they are actually showing me exactly the same, except the word Mango is not showing there. That's pretty much the only difference if I copy and paste them. So if I sort it by this, I can see that they are going to be the same. The only difference is that over here, this one has nothing, whereas this one has mango. Let's look at how to make a stack table and how to make a bridge table. And this stuff is going to happen in Power Query. I always advise to get your data in the most perfect way possible in Power Query before you load it into Power BI. So here we are in Power Query, and we've got budget to stack with three columns, and we've got actual to stack with four columns, the fourth one being country that doesn't exist in budget. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to, in the Home tab, Append Queries, drop down, Append Queries is new. 
we're going to select budget to stack and actual to stack. You can do three or more tables that way, which is often something I do. I love using this process and I use it a lot to get my data looking great in Power Query. I'm going to choose this name to be stacked data. And notice now that I've got five columns. So date, fruit, budget, actuals, and country. You didn't have country in, in one of them. You didn't have it in the other one. And this could work well, but I find that what is good to do is sometimes reduce the number of columns you have and make things the same name. So this will not work exactly if I have another name. So if I were to say this is fruit name, then down here stack data would have fruit and fruit name separately. So what we're going to do is have one column for fruit, obviously, and then we're going to have one column for value and then another column to state whether it's actuals or budget. And I do find that this kind of works well, especially if you want to do this with many, many, many columns. You can get it to just have the one value, even though the value might not be the same. One might be a percentage, one might be a number in the millions, one might be a number in the thousands, but it does still work if you get your measures right to it that I'll show you later on. So over here, I'm going to add, uh, rename this to be called value. And I'm going to add a column, a custom column. It's going to have the name of the table, which is going to be budget. Press OK. And here in actuals, I'm going to go to this one and rename this to value and then go to custom column, keep it as custom because we'll rename it afterwards and I'll call this actuals. And then in stack data, I have now five columns, custom being the one that I added. So I'm going to rename this to say category or something and then Make sure that these are showing you the right type. This is okay as null. If you want to, you can replace nulls with not applicable or something like that, but it's going to be okay like that. Next, we need to right click on these ones and untick enable load. We don't need to load these because we just need the stack data that has everything. So press close and apply. So that has brought me to this. If I go to the stacked table, the stack data that I built, this is how it looks. And as you can see, it makes absolutely no sense to do a sum on this because you're adding together numbers that have nothing to do with each other. But because they have columns in common, it does kind of make sense to do it like this because it does make your data model simpler. You just need a couple of things to do in DAX. So I'll show you how to do those things in DAX. What we're gonna do is we're going to say, give me a sum of the budgets only and give me a sum of the actuals only. So let's do that in DAX. In the home tab, I'm gonna choose new measure. I'm going to say budget equals calculate sum of value, close brackets for sum, where the filter, calculate, you have the expression and the filter. I have another video where I talk about how to do DAX for Excel professionals, but here I'm just going to go for it. So I'm going to say here the category is equal to in speech marks budget close my brackets, and then I'm going to press enter. But before I press enter, I'm just going to copy this, control C, enter, because actuals is gonna be very similar. So new measure again, paste, and I'm just going to say actuals and actuals in those places. And now I've got budgets and actuals. Go back up here, and I'm gonna do date and fruit and budgets and actuals and put those in a table and put it over here. Uh, I'm going to go to date and change it to this number format. Because this way it doesn't matter if you're in US or literally every other country that does it the other way, it does show it to you in a cleaner way and way fewer characters than before. And there we go. Now we have date, fruit, actual and budget. And if I were to copy this and take it into the stacked tables one. I have pretty much, yeah, it's the same as this one. It's just uh, slightly different names in the other order, but it is showing me the same amount. If I sort it by this one, then it shows me the same amount. No blanks, perfectly happening. So I tend to use this when I have multiple dimensions in common, whereas a bridge table, you would need to have one bridge for each dimension. In this case, it's date, so that you'll have a table for anyway, and then you make one bridge one for fruit. 
But if you have lots and lots of dimension in common, you will need to make lots of tables overlap for those bridge tables. So this kind of way is kind of a lot better. All right, well, I've actually got another table that I'm going to stack, and here I've got two measures on the same table. So I'm going to first untick enable load, and this is a more complex example. I'm going to click on these ones and detect data type. Yep, it's done a good job. And then I'm going to keep those selected and unpivot only selected columns. And now it's showing me this one and this one. Uh, this I'm going to keep, rename it to custom, same as before, and that's going to be value. Now I've got country and fruit. Go back to this one. Remember that I did have a country, but that was only in one of the tables. But if I go back to the source, click on the cog, I'm going to choose three or more tables. And this one I'm going to choose fruit prices. That one, double click it, press OK. And now I have it stacked like that, and I have margin and price. So now I have yet another thing, and rename columns will change it to category. You might want to change it to measure, that sort of thing I do quite often as well. And note that these are nulls because there's no date associated with the price and the margin. doesn't matter that it's not exactly the same data type as long as it's giving you a numerical data type because you can change it later on in the measures. And now I've just created the measures. And you can see them here, the DAX over here. I've got average margin and median price. So you can do whatever you want with them, even though this column will make less and less sense. This table as a whole will make less and less sense, but everything around it will make sense once you create the right DAX around it. All right, so let's have a look at bridge tables. So here we are in create bridge tables. So I have these two. This is my actuals and this is my budgets. And what I want to do is I want to create a bridge between them. So you go for the bigger table, which in this case is the actuals. And I'm going to just do an arbitrary thing like press OK so that it does create an extra step here, but it hasn't actually done anything as in reference to column name, for example. Because then I want to right click and I want to choose extract previous. And this one is going to be staging actuals. So the reason I do that is because I might want some things changed in one and not the other one. So I like to keep them separate. It's a good practice thing. Untick enable load to the staging one. And then I'm going to right click and choose reference. And this is going to be renamed to dim fruit names. And in this one, I'm going to right click on fruit and remove other columns. And then I'm going to go to remove rows and remove duplicates. And now I have the three. So I press close and load, and then I need to create my relationships. So I'm going to go to a new layout, and I'm going to choose the one that I did, which is Dim's Fruit Names. And then I'm going to add that with actuals and with budgets. So in model view, you want to just create a relationship fruit to fruit. It will do it once this side and many this side, and then here as well. If it accidentally does one-to-one, -one, you do want to change that because they're usually done accidentally. Uh, that would happen, for example, if there were unique values in budget, but then maybe you want to add duplicate and then it wouldn't work. So you do want to have these as full lines, not as dotted lines, so they're active relationships. And you want to do this one time for every bridge table. In the case of the date table, that was fine because we already had a date table, but you do need to do it once for each one. And then I go back to my report view and I can choose actuals, budgets, and then if I want to get it to work, I need to go to the bridge table, which is this one, and put that over there. Let's make that into a table. And there, there it works, but we do have the blank for Mango. So if you're asking yourself which method do I use or when do I use which, it kind of depends on how many dimensions you have that overlap, how many categories you have that overlap. So if you have only one, then definitely a bridge table is easier and it's more straightforward and it means you don't need to create the extra measures. But if you have multiple different categories, multiple different dimensions, then creating the stack table, I have found to work best. Especially you can do this even if you have multiple measures, you can unpivot them and you can get them to show up in one thing. It, it becomes really quite neat. But both methods are worth having in your toolkit. And definitely the thing to realize is don't use many to many unless you absolutely have to. And use whatever you can in Power Query to make your data model looking as neat as physically possible. And I hope you like that video. I put in a lot of work into it, <laughs> more than usual. But 
I have lots of videos on Power BI, Excel, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering my channel. So give this video a like if it's something you found useful. Thanks for watching.